Hey guys, Najee here. Welcome back to my channel. As you guys know, I made a post a few weeks ago where I was talking about the desire to bring other people onto my channel who have been through what I had been through coming out of new age. And so I am super excited to hear this testimony from our sister in Christ, DeAsia. She is has come out of new age. She's come out of all forms of witchcraft, uh, seduction, and hey, perversion. And we all have a story, okay? And so I'm just grateful that she is well, willing and ready to tell her story so that it can help set some more people free. So without further ado, guys, I'm going to go ahead and bring her to the stage. Hello, DeAsia. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much you? for agreeing to come and give your story. Like, I'm, I'm really excited about this one. So guys, I have not even heard the story yet. So I'm <laughs> listening for the first time. As you guys listen for the first time, she did introduce or interview me as well to mm -hmm. my testimony. And we come from similar backgrounds in reference to the practices. So I said, hey, I have to have you tell your story. So I would love for you to start off by kind of just sharing a little bit of whether or not you grew up in that or is it something or how were you influenced into that lifestyle? So I did not grow up um, technically in new age. Um, we were going to the church. We were in the church. Um, when I was a little girl, I remember being on fire for the Lord. Um, I always experienced like night terrors. I've always experienced like supernatural encounters from a young age. Mm. Um, sharing a room with my sister, I remember seeing and feeling a presence of dark spirits, um, the spirit of fear, anxiety, just things going on that she did not notice or see. And mm -hmm. speaking to my mother about that and her going to people in the church we were going to, and they're then teaching me like, you gotta rebuke or you gotta pray or tell the spirits to get out of your room. I would have mm -hmm. horrible dreams and see horrible things um, and just, attacks happened ever since I was younger. And I remember that calling on the name of Jesus like got me out of those things. Um, I even had a prayer shawl that my mom got given to her by the church. Mm. And my mother told me like when she was pregnant with me, she visited, she went to go visit a church and the pastor came up to her and was like, pray over your baby every night. Mm. Pray over your daughter every night. And I don't know if she was showing she didn't know the doctor, I mean, not know the, the the pastor, but he came up to her and said that. And so she did that. And she talked about when she was pregnant with me, she had supernatural experiences with God. Like she said, when I was pregnant with you, that's the closest I was to God. Wow. So since when I was in my mother's womb, like just things were happening with her. And ever since I was a young girl, things were happening with me. Um, and I know now that I was always very, pro very prophetic since I was younger. Um, so we're in the church and fast forward, some drama happened with my mom. Um, basically, there were people in the church who were wolf in sheep's clothing. There were some things going on. I was so young. I don't know the whole detail of it, but I do know that some things happened where my mother shared some things with people in the church. And when she was kind of speaking out on things or something happened, um, those things were kind of used against her, a part of her mm. testimony. And it was just some drama. Again, I don't know the details of it, but I do remember that we left the church. And after that, that was the church we were going to for years when I was in like elementary school. Um, my mother had some church hurt and it was hard for her to really trust um, other believers, other churches. We went to visit a different church. We were at another church for some time. And, you know, she even had a praise dance ministry that I was a part of. And then we left short after as well. And we just never really stayed at a church. We would just visit churches. And then it stopped where we stopped going to church as a family, like mm -hmm. around, I would say late middle school is when it wasn't really like we would just go here and there um from what i can do you, remember do you think she got burnt out from trusting the churches is why i'm not sure 
um, personally, because that's her personal experience and she didn't talk to me about that. But what I, what I observed was there was definitely a lack of trust. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like it turned into, well, I don't, I can have church at home. I don't need, you know, the church, but that did not last long. Um, mm -hmm. just maybe due to maturity. Um, and again, my mother like had, we would go to church and we stopped going to church as much. Um, certain things were coming into our life that was kind of of the world. Mm -hmm. um, my mother never like drank or smoked or anything like that, but she had like different boyfriends and, you know, they weren't married, but he would be over, you know, things like that. And so things that like we were told, like, you don't do this, don't do that. I was seeing and I'm like, oh, OK, well, you know, and my older sister, who was like a teenager, like she would be hanging out with her friends and stuff were going on, you know, being teenagers, getting into stuff and like I would be around it. And so like my sister, my older sister, she was, you know living her life and my mother kind of strayed away from the church as well and so really there was a distance it felt like god was not really close mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. going through stuff like there was a lot of emotional discord mental health issues going on in the home even with myself fits of rage mm -hmm. you know my father wasn't really there and so i just started to kind of have this dark spirit over me yeah. um and I was like trying to catch, I was catching the bus to church. I would t catch the bus two hours to go to the this last church that we were visiting, which is now my home church. When I got saved, wow. I was, um, the last church that we were visiting, I remembered that church. And so I would catch the bus two hours from where I was at to there. And it's like a 26 minute drive, but on the bus it was two hours. And I would catch the bus and go and be a part of the teens ministry when I was in when I was in high school. That's so awesome. That's kind of how that was. It was like we were in it heavy and then we kind of like got out and I kind of saw my mother's faith kind of dwindle. And so my faith was kind of like, eh, you know, and we'll, I'll, I won't move on until you ask me more questions unless, <laughs> unless you want me to. But then, then that's when new age practices started to kind of, you know, sneak in. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Like, what was the age where you kind of began to go into it or and how was it introduced? So I started to really be curious about it and think that it was OK, that it was just a new form of spirituality. Um, late high school, again, mm -hmm. like I would go to church here and there. Um, when I was in high school, catch the bus, but I was just kind of going throughout life. And my, my, I had family members who I lived in the house with, um, getting into like crystals, um, sage, kind of tarot, mm -hmm. um, not kind of tarot, but tarot, um, yoga. Like I kind of, I saw, those things happening and it was like this is what's gonna help me okay. you know um the person in my household who i looked up to a lot that was kind of getting into that it was like oh i'm doing this and this is you know not bad and you know this is bringing light in and and um what's the word i'm looking for knowledge deeper okay. knowledge it's yes. enlightening um and I was just kind of like, oh, okay, you know. And I was still also like going through stuff emotionally and mentally with myself. And it's like, I would t I would try to pray or I wouldn't even think about praying. I didn't read my Bible. I was just kind of like accepting stuff that I was witnessing in my household. There was emotional discord going in my household, mental health issues. And so the fact that the head of that household was starting to lean towards those things as a way to help mm -hmm. it was kind of like okay well let's just see what that does so mm -hmm. i got kind of interested in that but not really fully going into it and high school ended for me kind of very traumatic um i was like i'll wait for marriage like when i was younger mm -hmm. and when we got like distance from the church I was kind of just like, okay, you know, like, I'm just gonna do it, you mm -hmm. know, I'm gonna do it. And 
I was also starting to remember some things that happened to me when I was young. Like later in high school, I had like a flashback randomly. Someone said something that like triggered a memory of me actually being molested in daycare. Oh, wow. And I like forgot about that. So when I was like late in high school and like I got triggered and next thing you know, I'm starting to remember stuff that happened to me. I'm like, what? And I tried to talk to um, family members about it. And it was kind of just like, but you don't even remember. How do you know that even happened to you? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you're not even remembering. So I don't like you, you saying one thing, but you barely remember. So how do you know? And I just kind of was like, didn't know who to go to. So I met a young man and started opening up to him. And long story short, when he wanted to do what he wanted to do, I was like, well, I guess this is what people do to feel closer. Like, I'm just going to let it happen. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, it was super traumatic because I actually like caught chlamydia the first time I ever had. And it was horrifying. I didn't know what was going on. I thought like, what is going on? And like, come and find out this person was like sleeping with other girls and literally I called this person crying. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Like, mind you, I was a virgin and I was 17 at the time. Wow. So, um, did you have to go to your mom to kind of let her know what had happened so you could get treated or how did that go? Um, did I go to my mother? I think so. I think so. I did go to my mother and my father who was kind of in and out of my life. Um, I told him about it and he was like, oh, I'm about to, you know, we about to figure this out. So like with that being said, that person told, the guy told their family that I gave it to him, that I wasn't a virgin. What? Uh, Yes. And he was also telling people that we were in high school with like, oh, I finally got her. Like, you know what I'm saying? And he had tried to talk to me for two years. I never was, I never gave him a chance. Tried to talk to me for two years. Finally gave him a chance. And I remember crying like you know why how could you do this like this isn't you we were in the car talking and he looked he laughed and he literally and like i'm an actress so like if i like go into character and do what somebody did like that's just that's my personality Mm -hmm. but like he literally was like you don't know me like i was like this isn't you he was like you don't know me like you know what i show you type of thing like and I was just like I had opened up to him about like my molestation and stuff like that and he just boo-booed on me so after that Um, there was again starting to be like sage and crystals and readings being brought into the home that I was in with my family and so we know doors were opened in the spirit uh uh and after that I remember like being in my room and actually hearing voices telling me like cut yourself like hurt yourself like you know like you you're you're not even human like you can't feel anything because I was like holding stuff in and I'm just like mm-hmm. going so I was like hearing stuff which we know are demons mm-hmm. yes and, like I even like experimented with like trying to like really get attention from my mom and people and like I'm gonna cut myself and like I hope that this this is a cry for help. I didn't really want to die but like I was like I'm just gonna do I need yeah. so I did that. Um and it was just like at the time my mom was dealing with a lot of emotional mental stuff and it was like she couldn't give to you like she needed she couldn't give. It was a very hardened situation. And you know, black moms, it's like, girl, if you're gonna yeah. do something, you would have been do something right now and did it right. not. And so I ended up talking to like a counselor at school. And I was mm-hmm. like, I was actually having like suicide ideations, like thinking about like, okay, I'm kind of scared, but if I was to kill myself, how would I do it? Like, because mm-hmm. at, at this point, you know, this guy blocked my number we went, you know, we went to prom, things happen. I didn't even want to have sex anymore. Cause I start, I kept talking to him. Cause I was like, Oh, I had sex with him. Like, you know, he's the only person I had sex with. Like I should try to work this out and went to prom with him. I did not want to do anything with him. I was kind of like uncomfortable. I felt forced into it. And so I allowed it to happen. Mm -hmm. And after prom, I'm like, okay, well, we're moving forward. We're going to work this out. Like, you know, we're going to, 
be together. And like after prom, after everything that happened, he took advantage of me that one last time. And then he blocked my number. And the day after prom, he was at like a water park with other girls. Wow. And so I was at like school and I'm just like, I want to die. So I ended up talking to the, the, the counselor and long story short, I didn't know what I was, that me talking to her, they sent me to the mental hospital. Wow. So I was in the hospital for three days. Yes. So go to the mental hospital for three days. They're like testing me, asking me questions. I'm thinking I'm going crazy. And I ended up getting out and a bunch of other things happened with family drama to where, you know, I actually had to go stay with some, a friend. Hmm. Um, who, you know, we kind of trauma bonded. Mm -hmm. That was a, the, the friend was a guy as well. Um, his parents let me move in. We trauma bonded and his parents let you move in. Yeah. They wow. And we trauma bonded and everything like that. And we started dating when I wasn't even healed. I was having like nightmares of my ex or whatever, which I know now like demons were appearing to me at night wearing my ex's face. Wow. Um, I go to college after that and that relationship doesn't last because I'm in college and I get introduced into like drinking and smoking. And that's when I started to try the new age practices when I started to like smoke mm -hmm. eat for the first time and drink and I was partying and I started being sexually active mm -hmm. with other people. Um, Cause I was looking for outlets at this time. God is not in the picture after yeah. this whole situation with the guy and trying to talk to my family and it kind of being hardened at that time and mm -hmm. me kind of seeing what where my mother was mentally emotionally at that time her mm -hmm. being the one who taught me about christ when i was younger me seeing her kind of go far away from that and get into different practices and emotionally harden herself at the time and kind of just go into a dark you know loop and she also was in an unhealthy relationship where he was cheating on her stuff was going on and she was going through, she went through a depression where she was not eating wow. for days, losing weight. Like it was just the house felt dark, you know? Wow. So this was, this is all when the stuff with me and the, the guy who I lost my virginity to was going on, going through. So that happened, mental hospital, move in with the guy who I was friends with, we trauma bond, end up getting a relationship we weren't supposed to be in. And then two months later, because after prom and the whole mental health situation, I remember the day I got out of the mental health hospital, the day after that was my graduation from high school. Wow. And I ended up moving in with my friend because of family stuff short after graduation, like a week after graduation. Wow. Two That's months awesome. after that. Yeah. Two That's months after sweet. that, yeah. college. So when I go to college, I'm not in my right mind. Right. Really, I'm not. And I still didn't pray. Mm. I still didn't go to God because at this point I'm convinced that doesn't work. If mm -hmm. that worked, I wouldn't have been in that situation because I was still trying to catch the bus to go to church in, in high school without my family by myself. I would still pray a little bit, you know, people in my family stopped doing it. So that's when, after all that stuff happened out of high school, that's when I just stopped praying and I was like, I don't necessarily know what to believe anymore. Right, right. So how did you, what did you start with? You started with the crystals and sage or did you start watching tarot and kind of go in depth about what you actually practiced? So when I was um, smoking and drinking and partying and I kind of was getting into stuff, I just felt this darkness. Mm -hmm. I was lost. Um, and like, I didn't go into detail about what I was going through mm -hmm. really with anyone. Um, but if people who know me during that time, they would know now that I'm, this is who I truly am at my core. I was turning to somebody I wasn't. Um, my mom kind of was like using crystals and she was just, I would go home here and there and she would talk about how 
this crystal is for self-love. This crystal is for, helps you with anxiety. This crystal helps you bring wealth and this crystal helps you find love. Mm -hmm. And so I, it started with crystals. I got introduced to crystals and I'm like, wow, you know, I can, you know, I was taught like hold them in your left hand and charge them in the sunlight, charge them in yes. the light. And you can speak your intentions or think your intentions while you're connecting with the crystal, your energy connects with the crystal. And, you know, then it will be connected to you and it will bring you self-love. It will bring you this, it will bring you that. And at this mm -hmm. time I wasn't really reading the Bible. And so I'm like, oh, this is just stuff from the earth that I was not educated about that can help bring me balance. Right. So it started with that. Okay. Okay. So what, was there anything, because I know a lot of times there are certain things, you already had gone through a lot of, you know, traumatic things, mm -hmm. but usually there is something that you're seeking. Um, and of course you needed validation and all those other things, all the trauma that you experienced. What was it that made you go deeper or was it just kind of how mine was? I started with one and I felt like it was making me feel better. And I just went down the rabbit hole and just kind of dove into everything. Yeah. Um, I felt like I was gaining control and I dealt with the spirit of rejection at the time mm -hmm. because of me growing up, you know, being a product of, you know, the Lord brought me into this world for a reason. I know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, mm -hmm. but the way I was born, I was actually a product of infidelity. Um, and so with that being said, I didn't know who my real father was for a long time, found out who he was and he was barely there. Um, that made me feel rejected, made me feel like right. an accident. Going through when I was super young, being molested, mm -hmm. realizing that opening up to the guy about it, being used, being emotionally abused, um, being, you know, just felt used. Mm -hmm. I wanted to gain power subconsciously. Yeah. Um, I think that's what it was. I wanted to gain control. And that is mm -hmm. how the enemy gets a lot of people into witchcraft, specifically yep. women, even though there are men who are witchcraft as well, is when you've been abused, when you've been sexually indoctrinated at an early age, when you have dealt with rejection and insecurity, it is a way for you, like you don't have to depend on God or anyone else because I did not really trust depending on anyone else. Right. Um, I can go to these things that I can hold in my hand. I hold the power in my hand and I can control my balance. I can bring wholeness to myself with right. the help of things from the earth, but I'm bringing it to myself. And so I kind of went deeper into it because I felt like it was making me feel better because it gave me a false sense of power and control. Um, and because I am a naturally prophetic person since I was young, mm -hmm. when I started to go deeper, I started to really use those powers, authorities, and principalities that it talks about in Ephesians six that we wrestle against. Mm -hmm. I started to use those dark powers um, and the devil perverted my gift. And I right. felt like, because I never really tapped into the Holy spirit to use my gift. Mm -hmm. And I tapped into the kingdom of darkness to use my gift. I started to feel like I had power. So that's what really made me dive deeper. The, the need for control mm -hmm. because I felt out of control with my family, what was going on with my family, mm -hmm. um, with the men that I trusted in my life and just everything, even my own thoughts. Wow. That's always the issue is mm -hmm. the control, the control, the control, the control. And a lot of people, they end up saying, you know, when I did try Jesus, he didn't act like he heard me. He didn't respond to me. And mm -hmm. so it's the idea of you being able to cast a spell and get immediate results, mm -hmm. not realizing that what comes with that is also a curse. So kind of go more in detail, like about the things that you actually did. Like, what did you practice? So started off with crystals and mm -hmm. then I had people in my family because at this point, other people in my immediate family had began to practice these things. Mm -hmm. um, it started off with crystals and then I had someone in my family 
give me my first stack of Oracle cards. Mm. Um, and it was kind of like here, you know, spirit told me to give you these, mm. you know, you, you have a gifting and, you know, um, you should try it. Like it will bring you, it will bring you basically deeper knowledge of self and other people. Um, and I'm paraphrasing, but you know, this was years ago. That's basically what it was presented to me as. And then I'm like, okay. Um, so I get it. And I remember I was at college. I was in my university. I was in the dance studio. Um, cause I was a bachelor's in fine arts major. I graduated in 2023 from Bob Wallace university. Mm -hmm. Um, shout out to the yellow jackets. If you're watching this, a lot of them knew me when I was this person. So if you're watching this, it's actually <laughs> crazy. God bless you. Um, yes. and so I was in the dance studio of my university and I was working on dance stuff. Um, and I was doing like heels choreography and I was taking like dance classes and I had the cards in my purse mm. from when they were given to me. And like, it was like something was calling me to them. It was like, there was a spirit in the room with me. And of course I thought it was like my angels, my ancestors, mm -hmm. God was allowing me to connect with them. Mm -hmm. because I had this spiritual ability to feel these things since right. I was young, since I was young, right? So I open up the cards and they basically have instructions on how to use them. You have to say a prayer. You have to put your hands on the cards and say a prayer, not to the Father, Son, or the Holy Spirit, not in Jesus' name, to your angels and, and your ancestors, to your spirit guides. Call on them and connect with the cards, with your energy, with your with your hands. And you have to really put your intentions in it and like really like feel it and want it. And right then and there, I started that reading and I began to get um, false words of wisdom, everything. I started to hear spirits in my head talking to me. Wow. And I did not know what I was doing was I was doing an incantation, mm -hmm. which um, divination. Mm -hmm. And that's when it started. And so I started doing it all the time. Um, readings for, is this guy the person? Or should I do this? Or should I do that? Doing it. Um, and then the spirits that I opened the doors up to, to connect with, my, with me that had access to my soul. And your soul is your mind, will, and your emotions. Mm -hmm. They now had access to my soul. They started to speak to me even when I wasn't using the cards. Right. And tell me to give readings to other people. Mm -hmm. And so I would be hanging out with friends in a dorm room, at a party, going to events where nine times out of ten, weed was involved, alcohol was involved. And that is also, um, if you look at the word pharmakia in mm -hmm. the Bible, it's basically spoke smoking herbs. Mm -hmm. Pharmakia was also a practice of witchcraft in the Bible. Right. Um, and so when people are smoking weed and getting high and they feel elevated in their spirit and they feel like they can feel everything 10 times more and that they, they get this artistic influence, it's because you're tapping into the spiritual realm illegally, which is also mm -hmm. witchcraft. And so smoking weed when, when, you, when that smoke that you're inhaling in your body, you are inhaling in spirits. Like literally you are opening up the doors. And some people say smoking weed is a way to open your third eye and all that other stuff too. Mm -hmm, I would mm -hmm. be doing that. Mm -hmm. At this point, I was getting high every day. I was smoking in the morning before class, after class, in the afternoon, skipping class to go smoke. I was high all the time because I could not sit with my own thoughts. Yeah. And, so I was doing that, which opens the spiritual realm illegally in doing these cards. And I would be out and then I would hear something that that girl over there give her a reading. And I would look and see the person and, and spirit, air mm -hmm. quotes, which, yes. we know, which, is, a, which is a demon, would yes. say, her right there, give her a reading. And I started giving people readings and I was never wrong. Was it a like telepathic communication or did you like audibly hear it? Because normally they... Like, it was like I heard it in my head mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it wasn't my voice, mm -hmm. but it was like the voice was like a quiet whisper. And I would mm -hmm. say, I would be giving people a reading and I would say, Hey, like stuff, stuff would just come to me like, Oh, your grandfather died or, Oh, like, you know, did you lose a loved one? 
um, okay, oh, oh yeah, I lost my grandfather. Oh, I think this is him. He's here with us right now. He wants you to know this or that, or, you know, you need to forgive your mother. Like, wow. I remember I was smoking and this is when I was in college. And at the time I was like using this guy for weed and he was a drug dealer. Fun fact, I ran into him yesterday. What? <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, and we kind of made eye contact and I just smiled. I said, I, I would have been, uh, and, did you, do you know Jesus? <laughs> well, I was, I was with um, my boyfriend. Who, okay. And he's a believer. We're, you know, um, and he like, I didn't really want, cause he's, he's a hood guy. He had mm -hmm. his pants sagging and he had his gun in the front of his pants and it was showing. And oh. this, this particular person, like he does pills and all of those things. So he's kind of like office rocker. And the way that he was looking, I'm like, I'm not going to talk to him because I'm, and that's not going to work. So, right. but I'm praying he gets saved in, in Jesus name. Yeah. So amen. I was at this person's house. This is, this is just a story about how that happened. And literally his doors were barred up and stuff because a week prior, somebody ran into his house with guns trying to rob them or something like that. I don't know. And I was just there by myself, no friends, nobody knew where I was. I was just like, dee -dee 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 -dee. I'm just here. I like met him. He's like, Oh, come over. He sent me a lift. This is how reckless I was at that time. And he's like, we'll smoke. I didn't have any weed. He offered to smoke me out. And so I'm like, Oh, I want to get high. I'm going to go over there. Like, it's fine. I told my friend where I was at, I'm like, here's my location. And I'm over there and he's like having people come in, buying weed from him. He's also, he sold pills. He had pills there. The there's grace. Gu there's guns everywhere. The grace that was on your life. And, okay. I, and some crazy <laughs> stuff happened when I was over there, but anything happened to me. Also, he had his one-year-old child running around the trap house we were in. Oh and I'm my just God. there smoking. Yeah, I gave him a reading while we were there and I'm like talking to him. And, and mind you, I barely knew this guy. And, you know, nothing happened. I wasn't dealing with him like that. I was just there to smoke or whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, you need to forgive your mom. This happened. I remember he was like, bro, what? Bro, no. And he called his friends. He's like, bro, come here, come here, bro. She really, bro, she really like doing this. She doing that, bro. She really got powers or abilities or whatever. Because how does she know that, bro? I don't tell nobody about that. He was freaking out. And wow. so that stuff would happen. And so that's why I thought this stuff was so real. Cause I would literally hear things from people. Yes. And so did you think that it was God communicating with you? You thought you were in a position to really help people? Yeah. I didn't think it was God per se. I thought God was allowing for me to tap into um, a different level mm -hmm. to communicate with spirit or, you know, people's dead loved ones or spirit guides or angels mm -hmm. right talking to people's angels and we know there's demonic angels and good angels so i always say the devil tells two half truths but it still yeah. equals a lie yes so when he told eve in the garden oh if you eat from this fruit you will not surely die you will have the knowledge of good and evil and you will be like god those are two half truths because she would know the knowledge of good and evil and at right. the time at the time between Adam, Eve and God, which was that relationship, right? The only person, the only being who knew knowledge of good and evil was God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they would know what God knew in that way, but they would not be like, God, it was a half truth. And then he said, oh, you wouldn't surely die. They weren't going to die right away, but we were supposed to live eternally and be eternal right. beings, commun communing with God and just be yes. with God. But now humans are set up to death. And so yes. part of it. And so it was kind of like that two half truths. Right. So um after you know I got deeper with the giving people readings and stuff like that, I had people in my family, in my immediate family, um, starting to get into African spirituality and other mm. practices using like candles, like you know, a green candle is for like money and this, and a red mm -hmm. candle, I forgot. And then this candle is if somebody sent something your way for you to mm -hmm. send it back to the sender and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff. So I would be talking to them about stuff I was going through, just, you know, um, not guarding my heart, not seeking the Holy Spirit, not seeking the Bible, you know, like, like how I was raised back in the day, just like opening up to my family about stuff I was going through. Like, oh, you need to light this candle. And um, or I would go over, I was here, I'm gonna give you this candle so you can get some money and light it. Don't blow it out. 
let it go all the way out, light it in the, if, you know, when you wake up and just mm -hmm. let it go all the way out and put your intentions into when you light the candles mm -hmm. with the ritual. That's a ritual. Yes. So then I got into getting candles from family members and basically unknowingly doing rituals, protection rituals, wealth, wealth rituals, all of that. Um, mm. I was even in a relationship with, I was in a new relationship with the person who ended up being like my college sweetheart and like, you know, doing like little things to like, you know, make sure he didn't leave me or that. Like, you need to do this, you need to do that. I never really got into that, but like I was getting advice about, like I remember one time, um, this particular person in my family, the main one who was teaching me these things, they were like, you should go to a garden someplace beautiful. And I don't know, they told me to do something. I forgot what it was and basically bury the spell or incantation like in the garden. I didn't do that. But this was the stuff that the people were getting into and they were telling me to do stuff. Some stuff I was doing, some stuff I wasn't like. So that was like a love spell? Yeah, I didn't do that one. Cause I'm like, I'm not about to do that. Like if he loved yeah. me, he loved me. Um, but in terms of like the candles, I started mm -hmm. getting into that. And then um, I had someone in my family like teach me how to pray to the ancestors. Mm -hmm. I would go visit them and they had an ancestral ancestral altar in their house mm -hmm. that they set up. Mm -hmm. And like, this is, I got this knowledge and we're actually this and we're that. And you know, we are this and like the demons, the familiar spirits were like, I know mm -hmm. it's, she's like, I know it's this person. I know it's my grandma Ernestine because of this, that, and the third. And so basically getting knowledge from familiar spirits and thinking it's the ancestors. And I'm like, wow, wow. Um, you know, I remember I was going through something. I didn't know what to do. And I went to this per particular person's house and they taught me how to pray to the ancestors. And I kneeled down in front of that altar. Wow. And I called on my ancestors and I was talking to them. Wow. And, like they'll talk back. And I remember vaguely like hearing something, like kind of feeling confused, but thinking I heard something and mm -hmm. like praying to the ancestors, basically. I, I did that like, I think one or two times because they had the ancestor altar at their house. Right. Like one or two times I did that, but I was open to doing that. Mm -hmm. And like, there was also this tiger's eye thing, which is like a witchcraft tool where you ask it questions and it basically rocks this way mm -hmm. or rock this way, yes or no. A pendulum. A pendulum. It, yeah. actually, it actually worked. Yeah, yeah. Like I it, used to use one. <laughs> it was standing still. <clears throat> yep. And I would talk to it and it would actually start moving. Yeah. Aggressively. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, oh, wow, those are my angels telling me yep. there's a demon in there. So. The crazy that, thing is that we trusted these things that we could not see. Yeah. We're just believing what they're saying they are, but could not see what they were if they really were who they say they were. <laughs> no. And if you, and have the Holy Spirit open our eyes to see what those beings looked like and who they really were, we would have vomited and been terrified. Oh, yes. Probably peed on ourselves. Oh, we would have so, died had we seen what they really looked had like. Had they we seen what they really Yeah, were. we can't even handle it. Yeah. So, you know, those things were happening. And it got to a point where... um I ended up getting involved in some really darker stuff like seduction. I was in a relationship that was like on and off toxic. He would cheat on me. I would cheat on him. Mm. Just toxic things. And got to the point where I was like, oh, we're not together. You know, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to have sleep, sneaky links as people call it my age. Because, you know, I'm 23. So the whole sneaky link era, the whole like sleep around, girls can do what guys thing do. Is that what that means? Because I've seen it, but I don't know what that it's means. It's basically like someone you're in a situation with, someone that you, you're not his, he's not yours. But when you want to, you know, cadoodle, you know what I mean by mm -hmm, cadoodle, mm -hmm. you, you call this person, right? Wow. Having multiple sneaky links, you know, using guys, like I would basically, what's the word that I'm looking for? manipulate i'm getting into like basically because i had given myself over to the spirit of witchcraft i had a controlling spirit so i would manipulate and seduce guys this one guy i would like disrespect him dog him block him and he would say oh just please talk to me i'm like if you want me to unblock you send me 70 dollars. send me this what? do that wow. and he would actually do it and he was an older part he was older than me too wow. other weird but and like I got to a point where the Lord tried to reach out to me. I actually had an encounter with the Lord when I mm. caught COVID. So this is like, you know, I'm, I'm doing these things for maybe about a year now or whatever. Um, this was in 2020? 
yet the pandemic happened. Mm-hmm. Everyone's talking about, oh, like it's the end of the world. Da, 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 da. And um, I actually ran into a Freemason too before the pandemic actually happened. I was giving mm-hmm. readings at this party. He came up to me and he was like, are you a witch? And I was like, we were all high. So I was like, no, I'm not a witch. He was like, <laughs> he laughed. He was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing readings and this, that, and third. He was like, you're a witch. Wow. And I was like, no, because I thought I came from the Christian world. I'm like, no, I'm not a witch. I just, you know, I'm enlightened. I do things that mm-hmm. other people don't do. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh-huh, do you know what's about to happen? And I was like, no. I, I went along with it. I was like, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of things happening right now. Um, there's a lot of things happening in this room. You know, I'm just improv and going along with mm-hmm. it. He was like, yeah, my father's a Freemason. I'm a Freemason. My grandfather's been a Freemason. Like, we're, we're in it. And, like, he had all expensive stuff. And he was from Atlanta. He had flew in. He flew to Cleveland. And I remember he was like, yeah, like he was just talking as if like he was wondering if I knew what was to come. And I was confused. I'll never forget that. Fast forward, Hmm. the pandemic happens and I catch COVID and I'm basically in an apartment by myself for 14 days. And by yourself, by myself. I was still getting weed and like getting my friends to sneak me weed so I can smoke. I was actually on my college campus. It was a dorm apartment. I was sneaking and smoking weed in that dorm apartment. Wow. I had somebody even come in there like, we heard you're smoking this, that, and the third. They heard it. <laughs> they, they, they they smelled it. They were like, we heard you're smoking in here. I was like, oh, come in here and look. <coughs> Cause I had COVID. So I was like, yeah, come in here and look. If oh, wow. Like, COVID. If you, if you think you, if you think I'm smoking, you can come in here and look. And like, this is when everybody thought they were going to die. Like, you know, we can't come in here because you're isolated. But like, if you're smoking here, stop smoking. And I'm like, okay. Was doing, kept smoking. I had a rebellious mm-hmm. spirit at this time, like completely gave myself over to it. So I had an encounter with God. I don't know what happened. I started breaking down crying. Like, out of nowhere. The Holy Spirit came in the room. I started breaking down crying. Mm. And I, felt like the weight, I think, of my sin. I didn't even know what it was at that time. And I know now it was the Holy Spirit, but something told Mm. me to get a notebook and I started writing and I don't even know what I was writing. And I felt so alone when I had COVID. My family wasn't calling me. Mm. Um, I wasn't close to my family at the time. I felt so alone. I just felt like I'm in here for 14 days by myself. You know, I had minimal supply of weed. It was hard being with my own thoughts being trapped for 14 days and then the holy spirit was like write this down i wrote down and basically the lord said um i am here with you i've never left you mm. and I, god i knew it wasn't angels it was, it was god I right started, i started breaking down crying wow he After needed that, to isolate you like that in order for you to really yeah, hear but i i didn't listen because after no. that i started getting notifications about how my tuition was low and I needed to give them money or they're going to lock the doors. Mm. After after I got better from COVID, I was going to have to find somewhere to go. I was not talking to my family at the time. Didn't have a good relationship with them. My father wasn't around. I had no help. Um, next thing you know, I'm on YouTube while I have COVID and stripper vlogs start popping up. Wow. The devil. Yes. Stripper vlogs start c- popping up and they're doing like money counting vlogs like how they would count their money, what they made in a night. What? And I'm watching, I'm watching the vlogs and it's this girl who reminds me of me. She's like talking about her emotional stuff. She doesn't have a good relationship with her family. Um, you know how, and, and she would also like pray and use crystals and talk about Jesus, but she was a new age too. And she would just say like, yeah, you know, like it's a job, like it's a career. Um, you know, like we don't sleep with people. Like I just make my money and leave. And like, she was like, yeah, I don't even have to get naked. Like it's against the law to get naked at the clubs that I go to. Like we just wear like two pieces. She would show her little stripper outfits on the blog vlog Mm. and they looked like bathing suits. Oh, wow. Okay. It ain't like that here in Atlanta, honey. You, you butt naked in Atlanta. (laughs) In the state of Ohio where I live, it's illegal. If they're doing that, they're at some after hour spots that you're not supposed to be doing that. But it's illegal. You have to have on nipple coverings. You have to have on like a bathing suit. So I'm watching these vlogs and I'm just like, mind you, I was working at Chipotle. I got laid off during the pandemic. Mm. I didn't have any money. Um, I can't go back to my family. I gave up a track scholarship to go to college to be wow. an actor. 
Um, I ran track for seven years. I was number two in the state of Ohio. Wow. Yes. That's but awesome. I was depressed. It was when all that stuff was going on with my family senior year. I was depressed. I didn't want to run anymore. You needed support. Um, yeah, I needed support, and I also really loved the arts. And so everyone told me I was ruining my life mm. for not taking that track scholarship. I just kept thinking, I don't want to run around a circle for four and a half years depressed. I wouldn't be able to go to school for acting, for performing arts education, mm -hmm. none of that, because um, I'm an educator now. So I actually prayed to Jesus about that, to the mm -hmm. Lord. And he told mm -hmm. me to go to the college I went to, which means that he would have made a way because the Lord spoke to me and said that he was with me right before I started getting notifications about my tuition being low. It was actually during that time. I was getting notifications about my tuition being low. I felt alone. I was going through so much. Then the Lord spoke to me and he was basically saying that I'm here with you. We're going to work it out. But mm -hmm. my, my faith was not there. I all, I only trusted my own will. Wow. And so when the devil offered another opportunity, just popping up on YouTube, during that 14 days, I was fascinated with stripper vlogs. I was watching it. I was, wow. <laughs> and then I was, I just kept hearing something saying, do it. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I called, mm. the, I called the, the club that's nearest to me and I asked them questions. Like, you don't have to get naked. None of that. You know, we have strict rules here. It's a gentleman's club. It wasn't a raunchy club. Mm -hmm. So I end up basically, um, creating a stripper outfit based off of some stuff I had at my house. I didn't have any money. I went to Walgreens, stole some fishnets, wow. wore some heels that I had. I put on a wig and it was COVID and I put on a face mask. You couldn't tell who I was. They let you dance with the face mask on? You had to. It was COVID. Oh, wow. I guess they so still were trying to get their I money. I had the balls to do it because no one would know. No me. one would know. Wow. Um, and also me being an actress, you know, for years, I knew how to put on character. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I told you that this and you like, I could never imagine you doing that. Yes. Me either. But as you, you just don't seem like the type of person that we I, even. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. But well, we, we know now it was the influence of a spirit. Influence. And yeah. I also had the Jessica spirit at that time. When you give yes. yourself over to spirits, when you give yourself over to witchcraft. Yes. It changes you. It, it has access to your mind, will, and emotions, your soul. Yes. And I actually use an alter ego. I would call myself different names. I wouldn't even tell anyone my real name. So I started doing that and I was making money. I was paying my tuition. Um, I mm. never got into prostitution. I never, you know, did any drugs. I would just always smoke weed. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even drink because those girls would be drunk. People who offer to buy me drinks, I'm not drinking. Yeah. Um, I would That's smoke. Good. You know what I'm saying? And I was smart. I even, I would have, I had these thigh high, like boots, dancing boots that I would dance in. I carried a knife on the inside of my, on my inside of my blade. Wow. Yeah. And How old were you then? I was in college and I was about the end of my sophomore year going into my junior year. So like 1920? Yeah. Wow. And um, I would lie and tell people I was from Grayson, Georgia. What school do you go to? I go to I go to Akron University. I would lie. I just never told anybody mm -hmm. anything. I was like, I don't trust any of you people. And I saw men afflicted in there. And it mm -hmm. was actually demonic. It was the worship of money. Mm -hmm. It was the worship of sex. Mm -hmm. And what I was doing was I was basically selling my body without prostituting because I was basically, the Bible says that when you look at a person lustfully, you commit fornication in their heart. I was opening up myself up for these men to look at me lustfully and like sexually yes. think about me. Yes. I was also coming into agreement with the spirit of seduction and Jezebel mm -hmm. because as an actress and as a person who, whatever I do, I'm very good at it. I ran track. Mm -hmm. I was number two in the state in high school. I was on the honor roll. Um, I'm an educator. I'm good at that in college. Mm -hmm. Like did what I had to do. I'm a businesswoman. Mind you, I'm going to school during the day and I'm dancing at night and nobody knows. Wow. I'm telling my friends that I'm nannying for a, a, a married overnight couple, a, a married couple that both works in the medical field and they work night shifts. Wow, they you made up a whole story. Oh yeah, the enemy. Oh my goodness. And so later on, I ended up telling some friends about it when I was coming out and towards the end, and um, then some people probably heard about it because when I got saved, I started talking about how that was a part of my testimony. But this mm -hmm. is my first time talking about it in detail but fast forward the lord told me i would pray in jesus name before i went there i was mm -hmm. still doing the practices i was doing
the Lord warned me because when the Lord started speaking to me, I kind of stopped doing the readings as much, but I was still doing it. Um, and I was watching a girl on YouTube who was praying and doing this and doing that. And she was also a dancer and I wasn't sleeping with anyone. I actually had a boyfriend at the time who was okay with me dancing. Wow. That's yeah. new. <laughs> um, and he wasn't a good person. <laughs> he was, we were in a long distance relationship. He was cheating on me and I was also sending him money. So, um, of course he didn't care then. No. Yeah. Um, but long story short, like I remember the Lord told me, um, basically to come back to him, like surrender or mm -hmm. my covering will leave you. That's what the Holy Spirit said. The Lord mm -hmm. told me to surrender or his covering would leave me. Mm -hmm. And I would go to work with protection crystals in my pocket, everything. And I started feeling really dark. The weight of that place was really messy with my spirit. I already had mm -hmm. these other things going on. Mm -hmm. Everything the Lord, what the Lord told me was true. After that, I got in three back-to-back -back car accidents. Wow. Um, I went through a sexual assault. And the Holy Spirit, before I went to that guy's house, I, I knew it was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. don't, don't go there. I got so used to ignoring God's voice mm -hmm. that it just got quieter and quieter. Even when I heard it, because I mind you, I grew up in the church for a little bit. I, I there was a difference, even though I wasn't saved, and I thought the stuff that I was doing with the angels and the ancestors mm -hmm. were okay. There was a difference in when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and when those things spoke to me. Oh yeah, there's a difference. I felt like the fear of the Lord, but I was ignoring it. Ignoring it, I felt like the authority, and so. Whenever that guy's house after I wasn't, I knew I wasn't supposed to mm -hmm. smoked. Well, he, you know, he's in prison now. Long story short, there was something in that blunt. And, and I knew, and I just was like, after that happened, I'm, I went to the hospital, do the things that you do, made the police report. I remember going home and I opened my wallet that was in my purse that was at that person's house. Mm my protection crystal was there. And in that moment, God told me, this isn't protecting you. Hmm. This is when my eyes, my eyes started to get open. Yes, yes. My, mind you, nobody really knew what I was doing at the time. I didn't meet that person at the club, you know, um, met that person on social media actually. And we were just hanging out smoking. Hmm. But I started to really see. And back to back car accidents, my family wasn't there. Hmm. And I had money because I was working at the club and no one really knew, but it, I felt empty. I mean, I remember I was in my dorm and I had like thousands of dollars in shoe boxes under my bed, crying, hmm. crying, crying, empty. And other, I was going through other spiritual experiences. I mean, I, I was hanging out at this one guy's house who I was messing around with. We were drunk fell asleep and there was a black figure, a demonic presence standing over his bed, just standing there. And I, and I wow. was drunk and I was looking at it. And this was shortly, this was shortly before like the assault happened. This was after some of the car accidents happened. All this stuff started happening at the same time. So I'm just giving you a full synopsis because we don't want to go too long, but mm -hmm. he was like drunk, passed out and he rose up like he was sleeping. He rose up and he was like, you see it? It's a demon. And then he fell back to sleep. I what? I started having weird experiences. And I was just like, like demonic spirits were like with me. I had seen the same dark figure before. Mm -hmm. over me when I was asleep. It felt familiar. Right, the right. I started to open my eyes to the things that were following me. And then I, was, I, I, I broke down in the car one day after all this stuff started happening. And I was like, I just want to die. I just can't do this anymore, God. Like the money isn't worth it. This isn't working. The weed wasn't. The weed wasn't helping anymore. Yeah. And long story short, y'all ever? I don't know if y'all ever seen that meme where it's like when you've been living messed up and you crawl back to God, you just crawling back and crying. I ran to the Lord. I said, Jesus, like you must be real because when I started yeah. going through demonic experiences, only Jesus was pulling me out of that. Right. And so, it was a sanctification process. I was like, okay, I'm gonna follow the Lord. Um, 
I stopped dancing, but I didn't stop smoking. I was still having sex. Mm -hmm. um, but I was, and I was still doing readings for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then I ran into a guy who I was smoking with and I didn't know he was a Christian. We go in his car. There's a Bible on his dashboard. Mm -hmm. I met him on the artistic scene because I'm an actress, spoken word, poet, and dancer. I met this other person in the arts community. He had no idea that I was working at the club. Um, and at this time, I was like dwelling away from that. He had no idea about a lot of things. I get in this person's car and he has the, di the, the Bible on the dashboard and he's rolling the blunt with the blunt in his mouth. I, I get in the car and he was like, God don't want you to do that stuff anymore. And he just started speaking pro prophetically. And he, he says, read this. He takes the Bible off the dashboard and it's a, a Bible verse about not practicing divination. That is so crazy to me that he's sitting there rolling a blunt and he can hear what God wants for you. And I'm sitting there like, but can't hear that he's not supposed to be smoking weed. <laughs> right. And I'm sitting there like, what? and mind you, he didn't really know what I was doing. And he's like, okay. yeah, bro. He's like, yeah, bro, I don't know. Sometimes God be wanting to speak to God be telling me to tell people stuff, man. You believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. Sometimes God be wanting me to tell people stuff, man. And I be telling them, man, I just tell them and it be true sometimes, man. I don't know. I'm like, I'm like, so you just don't tell me. He was like, yeah, but come on, man, let's smoke this blunt, man. This, that's what God told me to tell you, man. Take it or leave it. Let's just smoke. I'm like, okay, cool. Wow. So all this stuff started happening. He can use anybody. He can use okay. anybody. <laughs> Clearly. And I basically, after that, all that stuff started happening, I stopped dancing and I began the process of sanctification. And it was a process. Mm -hmm. Steve was dealing with certain stuff, still with, but slowly but surely, God brought me out. And now I'm here. That was about almost three years ago. Mm. And I've been sober for over a year. Um, I've been walking in purity and celibacy for what? Over almost two years. Awesome. Um, awesome. And, yeah. That is so faithful. Pony and I eventually threw out all the crystals, sage, everything, not, not a lick of witchcraft. Um, and there are still people in my family who are slowly coming out. Mm -hmm. And that process of sanctification caused some tension between us. Even me starting my YouTube channel talking about certain things. Yeah. And it's certain people in college who knew me a certain type of way. When the Lord started calling me to speak out about things, it was like, how dare you? You know, I got attacked. Um, you know, spiritual warfare is real. Yeah. But the Lord is bigger than anything. And yes, one thing yes. I learned is that so many times we focus on the devil and what he's doing and mm -hmm. we forget about the God we serve. Yes. And yeah, I'm here today to testify like God can bring you out of all of that. Um, I am a survivor. I'm not a victim. I've been mm -hmm. delivered from the spirit of rejection. Um, I've been delivered from the spirit of control, the Jezebel spirit. And it was a process getting delivered from the Jezebel spirit, the spirit of control, manipulation and seduction was a process. Yes. Because I did not want to relinquish control. Mm -hmm. That's what the spirit, that's what witchcraft and new age is all about. Yeah, it is. That's why it's so linked. It's linked so closely to the feminist movement. Mm. Um, and that's basically, that's, that's my testimony. It was a lot, but. So let me ask you when you, cause I know, um, you know, as you know, in my testimony, when I made the choice to renounce and repent and turn from those wicked practices, you know, those spirit guides, which we know are demons begin to reveal themselves and they began to attack me. Did you go through any physical attacks, um, you know, through the process of you turning your life back over to Christ? Yeah. Um, I would be in my room clear as day and like, a water bottle would be here and just go like fall over. Um, wow. I would like stuff started happening. My mother would call me randomly and say, cover up your mirrors, like stuff. Like I had people in my family, like doing stuff at that mm -hmm. time. Um, my mother was still in that and she would call me and like say certain stuff, like, you know, and like, I would be like, what is going on? Um, Mind you, all that stuff, cover your mirrors, all I needed was the power of Jesus. Yes. For the Jesus and prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But like stuff started happening. I would get choked in my sleep. 
Mm -hmm. I would get demonic visitings in my dreams. Mm -hmm. Um, And the Lord started to speak to me in my dreams and show me things. And I had to figure out the difference when the Lord is speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Because then my prophetic gifting really started to um, come out during that process of sanctification. Not immediately, but during that process of sanctification. Um, I went through some things where... um, I actually went through a a whole spiritual attack in the form of a guy where when I was doing a reading one time, I saw a vision of me in this guy and the spirits, which are familiar spirits, tried to tell me that this person was my person. I I ended up meeting him months later. Wow. I promise you. And in the vision, I didn't see his face, but I saw where we were at and what we were doing. Excuse me. And then me and this person ended up meeting. And once we were doing what I saw in the vision, I'm like, oh, you're the person. I started telling him. And that was a demonic attack in itself. Yep. Because that came with so much. Mm-hmm. Um, just like I still had a hard time letting go of some of the knowledge. Yes. And, and also because I was trying to cling closer to Christ. Mm-hmm. Demonic visitings you know, sleep paralysis, mm-hmm. all those things, mental warfare definitely was happening. But I definitely had um, a friend who is now, um, we're in a relationship recording, you know, for awesome. that awesome. um, which is an amazing guy. And, you know, we're getting to know each other in that way. And he was there for me. Like he would pray for me. Mm. I had a mental breakdown and like he would pray. And we were friends. We went to the same church. So friends like him, my friend, my best friend, Talayla, um, the Lord started to send people slowly but surely mm-hmm. to my life to really tell me like, hey, this isn't right. You got to stop doing this. Like to teach mm-hmm. me, like, show me the word of God. And I started to study the word of God, um, started to really like lean towards the knowledge of the Lord mm-hmm. and learn about the doors I was opening. And that's when I ended up throwing stuff out of my house Um and like really closing doors, it took time. And then it was it was able to subside. There's always still some little attacks, but it was able to subside. Yes. You know, the crazy thing about, the crazy thing about this whole thing is that um, you go into it and you literally feel like you've come so far where you have this hidden knowledge that you're chosen, even though we were chosen, but we were just on the wrong side. And so having to really like retrain your mind from believing what you had learned through all of those practices and now starting afresh to learn the truth Mm -hmm. and to realize the whole time that the Bible was truthful and that everything in it is truth. (laughs) Yes. That was, wow. And I can tell you, that's one thing that was really kind of uh, hard for me. I don't know if you went through that, but it made it even more exciting. I was one of those people who felt like the Bible had been tampered with too many times and black people Mm -hmm. were ignorant and Christians are this and Christians are that. I was one of those people, which is a whole other story. But the Lord brought me out and he showed me that his word is the truth, the way and the life. Yes. Uh, Yes. And yeah. And so the word of God, for those of you who are new to, um, you know, there's a lot of testimonies that are out there that talk about what we're talking about right now, but there's always going to be someone that each testimony is going to reach someone new. And so for those who are new to even seeing a testimony like this, you must know that the Bible, it condemns these practices for a reason. And it's not to control us. It is not trying to keep us from knowing things that are going to help us, but it's actually to protect us because it's filled with nothing but the, the, the adversary and his little imps that just desire to Scott to disguise as light so that he can kill, steal and destroy us. That's the whole plan of his is to get us off of our God given path to live for Christ and to spend eternity in heaven with him. But instead he wants us to spend eternity with him. And so it is a consistent battle in the spirit. So I'm just so, so, so grateful that after everything that you went through, that he still pulled you out and you, I mean, it's a, 
it's a consistent healing process and a consistent deliverance process that we have to do in order to maintain that deliverance and healing. We have to do our work, our part. Yes. Yes. 100%. It's not easy. Yeah. And that pro that's why I call it a process of sanctification, because mm -hmm. you have to go through the process to come. Mm -hmm. out. It doesn't happen overnight. But when it does happen, you look back on where the Lord brought you from and you read mm -hmm. the little moments where he was there protecting, mm -hmm. shielding you. Yes. And I am so grateful for that. Yes. Without my father, I would be the devil wanted to have his way with me. And yes. Use me and my talents and my gifts and pervert it. And yeah. to, to God be the glory that that didn't happen. Yes. So I just want to ask you, lastly, is there anything um, that you that the Lord has spoken to you about in reference to the direction of your life, maybe in ministry or anything? You know, does he want you to write a book or is there anything that you're currently working on that God is kind of leading you into if you're allowed to share? <laughs> um, The Lord definitely wants me to write a book. OK. I am trying to be obedient in that process. It's going to be a process. The mm -hmm. Lord will write multiple books. He told me that. Um, so I'm just trying to really be obedient and be intentional about working on that. But the mm -hmm. Lord told me to start my YouTube channel mm -hmm. and start um, using platforms like TikTok and YouTube to um, just spread the knowledge of the Holy Spirit and tell my story and just be a light for other young girls who are, you know, Generation Z, because I was born in 2000. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's, it, it's needed. The world is going in a very dark direction continuously because the Lord is coming back soon. And that's what the Lord has me out here doing. That's what I'm doing um, to the best of my ability. And also the Lord has also put me in leadership positions with my church family that I am with for our young adults ministry. Um, where I'm just being used to serve, um, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, and sometimes it's not necessarily, I don't, I'm not looking for those big, you know, moments. I did not even want to do YouTube or anything. I wanted to get saved and sit in the pews and not tell my story. <laughs> I was doing, I was dealing with shame, but right. The Lord I'm so glad still, you got over that. Thank you. The Lord <laughs> still, um, revealing to me attitude of how he wants to use me but I know for sure that YouTube and um, writing will be one and also because I am in the arts as an actress as a um, dancer and as a spoken word poet the Lord wants me to use my talents for his kingdom as well I recently because I have an agent um, mm -hmm. here locally in Ohio I recently just decided I'm not doing certain projects that contradict with what the Lord has me releasing. Cause I can't be out here you talking cannot. one day and then cussing, gyrating, doing some sexually perverted stuff in a movie. And we all know that the, the industry is, is dark. And right. So, um, I'm looking to doing more Christian based films and projects. Um, so that's, that's my next step, whether that's creating some or just, you know, the Lord sending those opportunities, whether it's for acting, poetry, dance, whatever. Okay, that's awesome. Well, I definitely would love for people to support you mm -hmm. and to keep in contact with you. So you guys can follow her on TikTok uh, under, I know I didn't space it out, but it's Deasia Monet. Mm -hmm. um, and the same with um, YouTube, you can find her on YouTube under the same Deasia Monet, that but also, is that not yeah. right? So um, YouTube is just DH. I think YouTube is the first one. And then that's TikTok. I have to double check. I think TikTok is actually D-E-A dot. I actually just pulled up YouTube. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. That's what it is. Then you're right. Um, it's D-E-A-J-A -A dot Monet. I think that's a TikTok one. But you're right. It'll pop up. And then YouTube. Okay. Me. You can follow me on Instagram at D-E-A dot J-A. Um, and yeah, if you're in the Cleveland area, come to Elevate at New Community Bible Fellowship. I post about that a lot as well. And God bless you all. And that is awesome. <clears throat> that is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And <laughs> if you have any last words, if not, then we'll end the interview here. Um, the devil always tells two half truths still equals a lie. So 
just seek the Lord and his word. And yeah, if you seek for the truth, the way and the light, which is Jesus Christ, you will find him. So I just want to. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.